and spend some time in praise, spend some time in worship. Father, we glorify you this evening. We're so honored to be in your house. We're so thankful for the opportunity to come to praise you and prepare our hearts to receive your word. We thank you, Father, all that you want done tonight. It shall all come to pass in Jesus' mighty name. Thank you, Father. So good to me. I love the Lord. I love the Lord. 
my sins far away And rise in He justified Free me forever One day He's coming back Glorious day I said live and He loved me Dying He saved me Yes, buried He carried my sins far away And rise in He justified Free me forever
You know, there'll be times in all of our lives where we go through trials and we go through things sometimes we don't understand and face storms that we didn't see coming. And in those moments, those aren't the moments you want to raise your hands and praise God. Those aren't the moments you want to try to worship God. But in those moments, that's your help. Because in those moments, you just want to yield to your flesh. You just want to give up. You just want to quit. You just want to give up on everything. But in those moments, when the storms are raging, our praise ought to be responding to that rage. There's no storm that ever defeats you. It's how we respond to it that defeats you or put you over. Amen. And responding to storms is what's crucial. And I've not always done that perfectly. I've not always been perfect in that. There have been times where I've yielded to my flesh. But I found that if I'll pick myself up and start praising God, and start worshiping God right in the time where it's the most difficult then it brings you up out of that and the presence of God comes upon you amen and it'll help push you through amen and so it's more than just a song of shouting you know and all that's great but in those real life moments when you are faced with things that is the answer now, it's not the answer we always want to hear. How many of y'all know when you're going through things, the last thing you usually want to hear is someone say, well, you need to throw your hands up and just praise God. You need to just press in and worship the Lord. And right then, you don't feel like doing any of it. Amen. But it's the answer. Because God didn't bring the storm. God's not behind any of the things that are bad or wrong or are, are coming against us. That's all the devil's business. And he's made a way to help us get delivered no matter what the storm looks like. Amen. Amen. And so I choose. In those moments, it's how you respond to the storm that will deter determine whether you go through the storm or the storm goes through you. It's how you respond. We've got to learn to answer the things that we don't want to answer. We've got to learn to answer it with worship. Answer it with words. Answer it with praise. Answer it with a shout. Answer it with a dance. Amen. And I'm telling you, if we'll learn to do that, shout instead of doing the other. Get up and dance a little bit when you don't want to dance. Amen. Dance when you want to throw the covers over your head. And in that response is freedom. In that response is deliverance. And sometimes what we want is we want God to do all that for us. And then we'll get up and shout and we'll get up and dance and we'll get up and we'll respond after we have a feeling or after God will do something. Well, it don't usually happen that way. Because your actions show what you're trusting in. What I just said was really important right there. So when you respond out of trust, that, Lord, I don't really feel like doing any of this right now, but I know you're not behind this, and I know this is my way out. And I'm going to go ahead and worship you, and I'm going to respond in faith, and I thank you that you said that you will set on me, your presence will set on me, and your presence will come into my life. And I put my trust in that, so I'm going to go ahead and shout. I'm going to go ahead and dance. I'm going to go ahead and praise you right in the midst of this stuff I don't even understand. And then you'll find that he is your rescue. That you'll find that that is where your rescue came from. Amen. Well, I hope that helps. Because we all face different things in life. But we don't have to face it without knowing what to do. We know how. We know what to do. We know our position in this storm is praise is worship amen i don't want to go on and on and on i want to get dr jacobs up but i just felt in my heart you need to hear that
Because whether you're in a storm now or, or you're, you, you know, you're, you're just, you know, not in a storm. There's always going to be storms. And you remember the disciples when they were out in the ocean. The Lord spoke to me the other day. I was talking to somebody and the Lord spoke this to me. He said, you remember the, the, the uh, disciples were out in the ocean and they were being tossed. And, and they were in the middle of the water. But it says Jesus was out there walking on the water. But it said when Jesus got in their boat, immediately went to shore. And the Lord told me, he said, when you get me in your situations, you'll immediately get on the other side of this thing. He said, you got to get me in there. He said, I got in their boat. And when I got in their boat, it went to the shore. And when we allow God to get in our boat, get in our life, and get in our worship, get in our mouth, get in our praise, get into our life, then we begin to see Him working through our faith. We begin to see Him working through our words and through our worship and through our praise because we're allowing Him to minister to us. And He stepped in that boat and that boat moved. And I'm telling you, when you get God in your situation, things will start moving. And it won't just be a song we're talking about things turning around. You're seeing it turn around. Praise the Lord. Well, I hope that helped you this, tonight. Amen. God is good. You know, I don't believe God just wrote the Bible and put things in there for filler to like, well, that's just cute. You know, praise the Lord. They got on the shore. No, God got in their boat. Get him in your situation. Watch what will happen. Amen. Well, it's good to be here tonight. Praise the Lord. Amen. Why don't you turn around and give somebody a great big God bless you tonight. Amen. Hey, you know. Well, praise the Lord. It's good to be here tonight. I'm glad a few of your agreement. It's good to be here tonight. That's better. Praise the Lord. We uh, want to just take a moment and welcome all you by live stream that are watching us. We're glad you're tuning in with us tonight. Um, let, open your Bible real quick. I won't take but just a, a few minutes here. I want to receive our regular church offering tonight. It's so Wednesday night, our regular church offering, and so uh, we're going to receive our regular church offering as well as uh, a, an offering for Dr. Jacobs. And if you would uh, turn in your Bible, it's 2 Corinthians chapter 9, 2 Corinthians. This is, of course, a very familiar passage of Scripture, um, and it says here, 2 Corinthians chapter 9, and it says, but this I say, he which soweth sparingly shall reap also sparingly, and he that soweth bountifully shall also reap bountifully. Every man according as he purposed in his heart, that's really what's important here, because really verse 7 is connected to verse 6. How many of y'all know the way they, they sowed was connected to verse 7 in their heart? Every man according as he purposed in his heart, so let him give. Not grudgingly or of necessity. In other words, you're not doing it out of compulsion. You're not doing it to get. You're not doing it because you're desperate. You're not doing it because you feel like you're going to go under or someone's promising you something. Or of necessity, for God loves a cheerful giver. And God is able to make all grace. How many of y'all know grace needs to abound so that we can abound? And God is able to make all grace abound towards you. That's his unmerited favor, his favor on your life, that you always, everybody say always. always. See, this is God's will. That's what I want to get to real quick. It says here, notice it says, and God is able to make all grace. I wonder what things would look like if all grace was hitting our life. The grace of God, God's favor. On your money, God's favor on your family, God's favor on your life. This is his will. And God is able to make all grace abound towards you that you always having. That's God's will for your life. But you're going to have to put trust in that. God's will for your life is that you always have. 
Not that you're subtracting, not that you're desperate, not that you don't have enough, not that you don't have enough to provide for your family. It says here, having all sufficiency, look at this, always having all sufficiency in all things may abound to every good work. Notice what the abounding is for. Well, the abounding is for you to be blessed and for you to be taken care of and for all your needs to be met. But notice what also he said, so that you may be abound to every good work. So God is not just interested in you. He's also interested in making you a distributor or making you somebody that's a giver that no matter what the need is, you're always able to abound. And it may not be the amount you want to give right now, but you're still able to do something, amen, as it relates to that. Why? Because of God's grace, because of God's love, because God has blessed your life. Amen. You know, I'm not giving at the level that I want to, but I'm giving at the level that I am. Amen. And, and I'm able to give to every good work. And that's God's will for your life. As it is written, he has dispersed abroad. He hath given to the poor. His righteousness remains forever. Now he that ministers seed to the sower both minister bread for your food and multiply your seed sown and increase the fruits of your righteousness. Being enriched in everything to all bountifulness which causes through us thanksgiving to God. So there's a lot there. But what, I'm, what I want to talk to you just a a second about is he's talking here about seed he's talking here about grace he's talking here about you abounding but how many y'all know one of the things that a seed needs is water and a lot of times what we're doing is we may be sowing a seed but we're not watering the seed and we need to learn to water the seed of the uh, of what we're putting in. Father, I thank you that you said that you want me to always abound. And I thank you that I'm sowing with my heart tonight. I'm sowing with all my love tonight. I'm giving with my heart. I'm giving in faith. And I declare I'm, I'm not only planting this seed, but I'm watering that seed. And I wonder how many times we give offerings and those are seeds, but we're not watering them. I wonder how many harvests that we're not getting in because we're not taking care of the seed like we would a natural seed. That we're thanking the Lord. Notice he said he wants this to sprout up and to be a blessing so that it abounds to God with thanksgiving. Amen. How many of y'all know we're thankful to the Lord? And I don't think people look at their giving that way as far as watering the seed of the word, or watering their seed when they put it in the ground. That's why a lot of times the word don't work. You hear the word of God, but you got to water the word. You got to water it with the washing of the word. You got to give sunlight to it. You got to keep giving water to it. Keep giving your words to it. Keep giving your worship to it. Keep doing that, and it will grow and it will produce. How many of y'all know 2 Corinthians 9 is a process? It's not an overnight anything. Amen. But God wants you to abound. Everybody say, God wants me to abound in every area of my life and every good work. And that's the truth. He really does. That's his will for your life. But you start where you are. Amen. Are you with me tonight? Well, you ready to give? If you're making a check out, make it out to Church on the Rock. If you're giving an offering uh, on that, just put Church on the Rock and just put it under Dr. Jacobs. And we'll make sure that he gets all that. Uh, if you're giving by cash, please take one of those envelopes so that we can properly receipt you. You can also give by uh, text online if you uh, so to do that. Amen. Praise the Lord. You know, I thought about that before when I made, just made that statement. I thought, well, Lord, you know, there's been a lot of offerings I didn't put any water in. I didn't sow any. I didn't, I didn't stay with that seed. And I started looking at that seed like a regular seed. And I started to pick up my confession around that seed. And you know it works. And things start taking place. It's a principle. It says, as long as the earth remains, it'll be seed time harvest. And it's going to continue. Amen? Well, I'm glad you're excited tonight. Praise the Lord. Amen. We want to be a blessing to Dr. Jacobs. Praise the Lord. And and we want to send him away blessed. We're so grateful. I won't get back up. We're going to turn this over to him uh, after the song, after we sing the song and receive the offering. But I wanted to say public to, to all the church here, thank you so much for your your love, thank you so much for your serving this meeting and, and being here and all the people that stayed and cleaned up and all the stuff that you do, all the ministry of helps here. I just want to say as your pastor, I'm so pleased with you and so love you so much and so thankful for this church. Amen. And so thank you so much for your labor of love and we love you very much. Amen.
Well, hold your offering in your hand. Father, we're so grateful tonight. We're so thankful for all that you're doing in our lives. Father, we do sow our seed of faith tonight. We sow in faith, believing that you're going to multiply our seed sown. Father, we're not given to get. We're given because we love you. And we're given because we love Dr. Jacobs. We love the, the house of God where the word of God is preached. And we're grateful for this place. So we return the tithe, Lord, that takes care of the church and all the things here. And we also sow offerings tonight because we want to be a blessing to Dr. Jacobs and to the projects that we have. And so we receive it. We call your people blessed in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Please stand up with me if you would. Deserve the glory and the honor, Lord. We lift our hands in worship as we lift Your holy name. You deserve the glory and the honor, Lord. We lift our as we lift your holy name for you are great you do miracles so great there is no one else like you there is no one else like you for you are great you do so grateful just so grateful that you love us with all your being and you've been faithful to all of us even in sometimes when we haven't been faithful your mercy has covered us your love your your loving kindness and your tender mercy so we're so thankful there's nobody like you no other god except you we love you we bless you pray that you would anoint my lips to speak as the oracles of God and with my hands to minister with the grace you put in me. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Everybody said, amen. You could be seated. <clears throat> I wanted to kind of echo what uh, Pastor Dennis was saying about the Ministry of Health. I really appreciate you so much for being in this church. I appreciate the receptiveness you've had towards me. And... Uh, and your kids have really, really blessed me. I think I got about 15 letters last night. <laughs> and I loved it. I always said, you know, if your kids don't like me, I better figure out something. <laughs> but they've been so precious. Hallelujah. I want, to, I want to read you just a couple of the prophecies. This, these are my prophecies from people I respect. Highlight that last comment. <laughs> you ever had prophecies given? Oh, my gosh, I'd have a notebook full. But I didn't think it was God what they said. You know, there's something that, you know, you need to le learn to be discerning. And the only way you're going to become that way is get in the Bible. That's number one. Number two, pray in tongues more than you think you can. Yes, sir. Let's think about tongues. You know, you don't know what you're saying unless you have interpretation. I, I, sometimes I have that right then or later. <clears throat> but you're going to have to do that if you're going to walk in the Spirit and discern things. There's general discernment the whole body of Christ has. Everybody can have it if you just work on it. 
You know, when God gives me a check about something, I stop and think about that and pray about it. And if it don't go away, I'm concerned for that. Uh, well, I'm, I better hold up until I hear what God's telling me. How many understand what I'm saying? But I also have the gift of discerning of spirits. That's demonic and angelic. And occasionally I look into somebody and see something there that needs to leave. <clears throat> so, you know, that's just what I do, just talking. I wanted to read you a couple of prophecies. I, uh, I don't know if Dr. I don't know if Dr. Hadball was on this trip, July 3rd, 2002, in Abakan, Russia. We were in Siberia. <clears throat> I don't think he was there. There were six of us, five, and then Dr. Dufresne in the side room after he'd preached that night. And the power of God just hit us. It was just something we were all shaken under the power of God. <clears throat> Excuse me. And then, and then he began to prophesy this prophecy. I'm just going to read a part of it to you to the, those who were in that room. And he said, these are the men that I'll send all over the world with special anointings, special anointings, special works of God, special acts of God will flow through their ministries. These are surely the last days. Rise up and be strong, be healthy. See through the Spirit and hear from the Spirit of God. Uh, now move across and do exploits in my name, in the name of Jesus. And he, he took authority over the president. There was some kind of threat on the president. He picked that up. I don't know if the newspapers knew it or anybody else, but he picked it up and the Holy Ghost dealt with it. We were with him. Then he says, who are these men? When they go into cities and churches, they rise up right away, right away. I'll tell you, uh, let's see. I'll tell you who these men are. These are the men of the last days that are anointed by the Spirit of God and the power of God to do the acts of God who yield themselves to the acts of God. That was given 2002, so that's 20 years ago, almost 21 coming up. And then he said, uh, signs, miracles, healings, and women. There will be women, there will be, who are these women, who are these women that God is raising up in these last days? I see it in my ministry, some, like some of the grandchildren of the pastors that are with me, connected to my company, we could say, I'm not striving to do it. I'm not gathering people. I hope you understand what I say when I say that. Because sometimes it don't work out. You know, because they just don't want to know the truth or something or whatever. They think some, I'm going to promote them. You know, that's a bad, that's a bad idea to get with somebody because you think you're going to get something personal out of that. You should have respect for whoever you're under. And, and they, you will get things if you do it right. But it's not like you just expect that. All right. Then he went back into who are these men. These are the men that walk in the power of the acts of God and the healings of God. So that's part of, part of my calling too because I was in that room when that happened. And I don't remember which pat preacher it was. Somebody had a little miniature recorder and clicked it when he started talking because we, we, we were just shaking out of the power of God. I don't think we could have wrote if we tried to. And then who are these men? They can tell me about my past. You know, I was in this church. I think it was the last meeting I was in, maybe two meetings back. I ministered to somebody here on staff about their past. And she came to me later, wrote me a nice letter, and told me it was right on. I didn't know anything about that, except about the Holy Ghost. Amen. And then I want to read this one from Kuwait. Uh, Pastor Dennis was with me in this meeting. We were in a tent. I mean, we were in a tent like you wouldn't believe it. The whole floor of the tent was covered with expensive Persian rugs you, that the ladies like to put in their home, you know, like 5,000, 10,000. The whole, it was seated about three or 400, didn't it, Pastor Dennis? And uh, he, I was ministering. Dr. Frain asked me to minister, and I was ministering. Then he walked over to me and hit me in the head, and he laid hands on me. And, that, and then he, I'm laying on the floor on a Persian rug. I'll never forget it. And what was under me was the sands. It was comfortable laying there. <laughs> And then he pointed to himself and he says, as you have walked in the footsteps of the prophet, pointing to himself, Dr. Frank, you began to make your own footsteps as a prophet. I read this, it's, it's not easy to read because I feel like I, I haven't achieved what you know I should yet in this, especially after 20 years or better. The healing anointing that has come on you and gone, you went in and out of it, has come to abide. Powerful. I want to read a couple more back here. Pastor Nancy she ministers to me a lot too in this. And I have all kinds of, a few other pa pieces of paper that are special. I just couldn't get it all on one page. She said in March 2011, more revelation and more angelic visitations for me. Then she ministered to me in April 2011, 
said another place, I've come into another place in the spirit, in revelation and seeing and knowing, and in the prophet's office. And then uh, Pastor Nancy down here said, you're going to have more angels as you travel and more angels in the local church. I thought she meant my local church where I attend. But anyway, now this last one, it's so sweet. And Dr. Dufresne, this was in August of 2013. I didn't have a clue he was going to go home in eight weeks. You know, he went home in October. But it was August, and I was in Clarksville, Tennessee with him, and he got up to preach, and he said, Michael, come up here. I mean, and he said, another part of the puzzle, one part, something's missing. Then he laid hands on me and said, it's not miss, missing anymore. So I took that kind of like he took with Brother Hagan. Brother Hagan said to him, you know, ministered to him by laying on the hand, says, you got everything that you need from, he said, you got everything you need. Now, what he meant by that, Dr. Dufresne interpreted that, all that he needed from Brother Hagan as his spiritual father. See, part of the job of having a spiritual father would be they can impart to you through the teaching of the word, like we did, I think it was Sunday night. I know you thought I was going to preach through until Monday morning, but. <laughs> and thank you so much for giving me some time. I'm, I'm going to try and not look at that time cop. Anyway, now, this is another prophecy. I want to read part of it to you from Brother Hagen. It was given in 1988. That's a fur piece back. Okay, and three angels appeared to him. One of them was coming to talk to him about the political arena. Another one was coming about the financial arena. And the third one was coming in the spiritual realm. And then the angel went on to say, or Brother Hagen did, I don't know which right here. In this realm in which you minister, talking to Brother Hagen, the angel was. In this realm in which others who minister in the spirit minister. And then he said, no, not a change in the church world. They'll just keep right going on with their deals. Their, their purposes and plans and pursuits, and they won't ever get it. Then he began to talk about there will arise an army. He says it about ten times right here. I'll skip those, but I want to get to the point I'm making. He says, this is the beginning of the last days, and we will walk in the Spirit, men and women equipped, think about this, equipped with the power of the Holy Ghost. And then this last few scriptures, I mean last few lines of words here. They'll learn to walk in the Spirit. you got to learn that. I, we could teach about it. Dr. Dr. Hadpaw would probably do a better job than I could, but I've taught on it for years too as a pastor. You know, spirit, soul, and bodies. And then you learn to walk in the Spirit, not out of your head. This is what's wrong with a lot of the body of Christ. They don't know how to operate out of their spirit down here. They just operate out of what their head tells them. And, of course, I'm adding this in. It's a severe, I mean severe limitation. Yeah. Now, if you you know, if, you're, if the train's coming, stop your car. If something's hot on the stove, you don't grab it with your bare hand. That's a, that's a natural world we live in. And all that's important to us. That we can feel heat or we can, whatever, or stop sign or a red light, you know. But he's talking about learning to walk in the Spirit. And he said, they'll learn to join forces with the forces of heaven. And the angels will come and minister unto them. I've had that in my own life many times. And the angels will come and minister with them. See, that's what I've been telling you about all the way. I have angels that minister with me. I'm not bragging about that, but I know they're here, and I know they always stay with me yes, sir. continually. Yes, sir. <laughs> now, sometimes I send somebody ahead to a church I'm going to. When I said somebody, I'm talking about an angelic me, to help prepare that church for me. And they do. They do their best to do that. You know, and some pastors are just smarter than others. Some pastors are just more spiritual than others. And so they will do a little teaching to help people understand who I am, how I function. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. Okay. Praise God. Yeah, I'm going to be cautious about my time tonight. Try to. Uh, I think I want to talk to you, though, for a minute. I think right here. And let's turn to Daniel 10. And I want to talk to you. And, of course, I've been saying this all along. But Daniel chapter 10 and verse 12, that angels have to be spoken to by us. Let me, let me say it this way. I, it's more, this is the way I think that if God, and he does in Psalm 91, he says, you know, he charges his angels. He gives his angels because he, he's their creator. Yeah. And so I always think if he's got angels, I got angels because yes, I'm sir. connected to him. And I do. Oh, yeah. it took me a long time to figure all this yes, out. Sir. You know, I'm, I make it sound simple if 
if you're thinking. I don't think it's complicated. Yes, sir. <clears throat> but you've got to learn to release them. Amen. And that happens when I speak and when you speak. If you speak in, in line with the Word, I read your Charles Capps little deal last yes, night. Sir. You know if you speak contrary to the Word, they won't do anything yes, for you. That's right. They've got another group listening to you, demonic powers. And if you say you're stupid, guess what? Yep. You're going to stay yep. stupid. And that's a terrible word to use with people. I'm not calling you that. They're saying, if you say I can't get it, then you can't get it. Yes, sir. Because you said you can't get it. And it shuts down your ability, not in your head as much as down here with revelation God will give you about things. And it don't have to make sense to your brain all the time. I don't know how many times I have to tell people that. But if I just operate out of my brain, I'm not a real educated person. And I, I try to be simple in my life. I don't know if that means anything to you. It means something to me. Yes, sir. And not get too heady about everything. Well, I just stay in that moment. I stay in that focus on my spirit. What's my spirit telling me to do? Yeah. And if I don't know, I don't move on it. Right. I wait. You know, the Bible says in Romans, wait upon the Lord, wait upon your ministry. Yes, sir. That doesn't mean busy, 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 busy. Yes, sir. You know, it's not, it is what I'm, I'm just being serious with you, man. I hope you're listening. Yes, I am. It's not like your kid get hurts and you pray in tongues to the doctor, but that's the last time God heard you do that in 10 years. That's not a very good witness. And right. God may redeem your children just because they love them and right. you're making some effort, but that's no way to live. I don't live in crisis. Right. Yes, sir. I, I do not live in crisis. I don't care what it looks like to me even. I just say you don't count. Jesus counts. His word right. counts. And I count. Amen. <laughs> okay. So you're going to have to say something. I wanted to give you a little, uh, just abbreviated teaching on your words release your angels. I don't know if I said this in the meeting or I just talking to Dennis and Angie. You see, my son's the pastor now, and I told him I was preaching a while back. I would probably be teaching on angels. I don't know. I stopped and said, Jordan, you need to be talking to that angel that was assigned to this church. He wasn't assigned to me personally. He was assigned to me as the pastor of that church. So I used him. What do you mean you used him? He has things in him that I know, and I just, re I just spoke to him. And, uh, you know, I'm just talking to you here a minute. <laughs> Are you okay with that? Yeah, so it's like I went to Nordstrom's one time. Somebody gave me a nice Nordstrom's card. I think it was about $500 on it. And I forgot to call ahead and activate the card, so I had all this stuff piled up on the, the top where they check out. And the lady took my card. She said, well, Dr. Jacobs, this hasn't been activated. You'll have to call them. I said, well, I left my phone in the car. Well, then go out there and call them. I went out there and called them, came back, and it went through. Yeah. Now, I'm saying that's a simple illustration. You have to call upon the angels for them to help you. Uh, and then personally, this is my opinion. I mean, Hebrews is my favorite book, a period, of the Bible. I think it's a wonderful book. It's just powerful. Of course, Ephesians probably up there and Colossians too with me. But, you know, we need to speak to things, to move things. And what I was going to say is this, because you, you probably wouldn't guess from me the way I teach and stuff, but I think Psalm 91 is one of the key passages in the whole Bible for angelic help, angelic protection, and you could just read it out loud to yourself until you could just quote it. Amen. You know that? You know isn't that what it says? Come into his presence in a secret place. That's not just going to church. That's because I've got a relationship with him. And you do too. And I will say, second verse, I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge. He's my fortress. We were singing a song with that in it. I don't know if it's tonight or last night. Sometimes the meetings run together in my head. <laughs> but he's my refuge. He's my fortress. He's my God. And in him will I trust He'll deliver thee, and he starts to do a long list of things. And though a thousand fall on one side and ten thousand on the other, it won't even come nigh me. For, or we would say because, the way I think, for I've given, because I've given my angels charge over you to keep you in all your ways, those that are abiding in the secret place. Not just a generic thing you can pick up and just, you know, say, but you need to get in Psalm 91 and listen to what he's saying. And he talks about stepping on evil spirits, evil powers with your feet because you have authority over them. That's why he says that way. Okay. So I'm in Daniel, aren't I? Yes, sir. Chapter 10, verse 12. Look at this a minute. 
Then said he unto me, this is the angel, you could read the whole chapter later, I think it's Gabriel. Uh, then said he unto me, fear not, Daniel, for from the first day that thou didst set thine heart to understand and to chasten yourself or humble yourself, that would be a better word, before your God, thy words were heard, and I am come for your words. Now, I've had people argue with me personally just in the Bible study teaching this. And when it was over, somebody had their Bible open. I could tell by the look on their face they want to start a fight. <laughs> and she tried to, but I wouldn't fight with her. I said, well, what kind of Bible you got? <laughs> King James, I said, open it up and read that scripture to me and you again. She said, yeah, I know what it says, but I don't believe it. I said, well, then I can't help you and God can't help you either. Yeah, you're rebuking the word in your own life. You're, you're in a curse mode. So, and let me show you, show you something here. The angel that came and talked to Daniel said with his own mouth, I think we ought to take the person that's doing it as to listen to him. And he said, your words were heard, and I'm come for your words. I think the Amplified says, I've come to respond to your words. Yeah. I pray a generic prayer when I get on an airplane. I'm getting on an airplane tomorrow. I'm going back home. And I'll either read Psalm 91 normally or quote part of it. And I say, Father, I thank you. The angels know how to lift me up and keep me so my shoes don't even get scuffed. And I position the angels around this plane to help these pilots. And they're good trained pilots. And, I, and, and if they let me, I'll pray with them tomorrow. I always do with the, whoever's flying the plane. If it's private, I'm in private deal now. So I'm not entirely. I'm, I'm, str I'm moving towards it. Because I can accomplish a lot more. And when you drive everywhere, it's just, it's weariness on your body after a while. And it limits your meetings. Because you've got several days to drive there, several days to drive back. And hotels you stay in, the whole nine yards. But anyway, I'm just talking. You have to talk. The more you say it, the more you'll have it. And you can just say, Father, I thank you today. Like the simple prayer, thank you today for your angels that have charge over me to keep me safe in all of my ways. Of course, when I say that, I revert in my thinking back to Psalm 91, verse 1 and 2. I'm in that secret place with him. And I'm saying, you're my refuge and you're my fortress. And the angels are helping that to come past too because they're listening for my words. They're listening for your words. And then that other group's demonic. They're listening for your words. I'm not teaching on deliverance, but I found in the Bible, I had a vision one time. It's not included in the vision I've been talking about. Like I said, I've had other things, but I, I saw this man talking, and I saw this little creature, a demonic creature following him, and he had a little notebook, and he would write down that, what he, what he was doing, and he found out what irritated this guy. And then he started working continuously to irritate him. We know if we do this, this, this to him, he'll probably cuss, sure enough. He goes up to the church every week, but he's just out of control. If we do this to her, duh, 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 she'll start crying. She'll be all emotional. Now, I'm a pretty emotional person, you know, for being a faith man. I cry easily, and I'm thankful for that. I'm not making fun of me. But if you don't cry, that's fine, but you better be right. Whether you cry or don't cry, it ain't going to be impressed with God. Okay, I'm just trying to help you. But So I thought about this, and some smart aleck person, said to me, well, that was a prophet. What about me? And I didn't know how to respond to her at the time. And it isn't always ladies who say stupid things either. <laughs> so you men don't get puffed up like you're right and she's wrong. You better listen to her in some cases or you'll be, you'll be in trouble. Not just with her, but anyway. So I said to the Lord, I said, Lord, I want you to give me a verse to, to defend what I know is right, but I don't know where it's at. And he said, that's easy, it's in Luke 7. So let's go over there and look what he told me. Now, he doesn't do this to me every time. I, it'd make my studying a lot easier, but I hope you're paying attention. But he, he said this to me, uh, Luke 7, 28. Now, remember we said that this person said, well, I'm not a prophet, then why would angels listen to me? And I'm going to show you the key, the answer scriptural for that is right here. Uh, 7, 28 of Luke I say unto you, among those that are born of women, anybody here not born of a woman? Raise your hand. I'll, lie, I'll cast that lying spirit out of you. <laughs> yeah. And, part, and I would like to, I'd like to play with that thinking, but I better come back to what I'm doing. But I've been studying on authority of the believer. And the reason the devil doesn't have any authority in our life, he doesn't have a body. Amen. Come on now. 
If you were born here, you have a legal authority in the earth as a person, a human right. being that God created. Right. And then much more if you're born again and if you're spirit filled and you stay filled. Yeah, and eventually the devil gets tired of getting beat up by you. He'll leave you alone now to another time when he tries to come when you're weak. Yeah. Yes, sir. See, he's a strategist. Yeah. The Bible said, don't, don't let his schemes deceive you. And he was talking to a bunch of people about forgiveness when he said that. Or he'll take advantage of you. Yeah. See, sometimes you think, well, I'm pretty good with most people. What does that mean? Does that mean you got somebody in the cage, you take them out every day and beat them up verbally in your head? <laughs> no, I'm really telling you, forgiveness will kill you as quick as anything. Yes, sir. That and strife. Yes, sir. Okay, so he said, among those that are born of a woman, there's not a greater prophet. And so that it would include Daniel and Moses and all of them from the past. There is not a greater prophet than John the Baptist. But he that is least in the kingdom of God is greater than he. Now, why would that be so? Because, number one, you've been born of a woman, so you have the right to be on this planet legally. And number two, you've been born of the Spirit, which is implied into that. So if you're the mole on the left toe, the left little toe of the, your body, you still have the same authority as the neck has. <laughs> you really have the same authority as the head has, because you're a joint heir with Jesus. So that, I finally told that person, I don't know if they ever came back to my Bible study, but anyway... You know, we're learning some things tonight. I, I hope you're listening to me. I know, I know you are. So I'm talking about, you know, things that help us get a hold of things. Let's, let's look over here at Luke 12. I'm in Luke you know, already. And whoever's back there manning the scriptures for me, if you will pull up for, in the Amplified Bible, Luke 12, verse 8 and 9 for me, I would appreciate it. And I'll give her a chance to do that. Or him, I can't tell who's back there exactly, but... I'm talking about words. And you have to learn, and, and, and angels. That's the combination because the angel came to Daniel. And if you read a couple of verses before the one I pick, it'll say, listen to me, it'll say God sent him. But when he got there standing in front of Daniel, he said, I'm here to respond to your words, not God's. They always respond to God, those that didn't get booted out. You know, there was a military coup in heaven one time. The devil came with his, his buddies and they were going to take everything over. And he thought he was all that in three bags of chips. <laughs> and God threw him down to the earth. Yeah, then he's the one that messed up Adam and Eve. Wow. Yeah. yeah. All right, I'm just talking. <laughs> you, I think it'll help you. Luke chapter 12, let me find it, verse 8 and 9. Thank you, you got it up for me. I tell you, whoever declares openly, speaking out freely, and confesses that he is my worshiper, and the, and the King James says confesses me before men. So who is me there? Jesus. And he's not only Jesus the man, he's Jesus the word. So whoever confesses the word of God, let's, let's see what else it says. Uh, he's my worshiper, acknowledges me, acknowledges my word before men. The son of man also will declare and confess and acknowledge him before the angels of God. See, it's based, let's to be careful here. It's based on my confession but Jesus, if I'm in the Word saying that, he's already in agreement with that. Because yes, he is the Word made flesh. Yes, How many are catching that? Yes, so it's not like, you know, you are a very powerful person. I'm trying to get that over to you. But it takes your words, not what you think. Yes, I'm glad I don't say everything I think. Yes, you know, I'm getting better at it because my mind's been renewed for 50 years. You know what I mean. But you know, it's just a lot of stuff. When you're in full-time ministry, the demands that people have on you. So it says, if you will acknowledge the word, then I will acknowledge and confess and declare you before the angels of God. Think about it. You've got Jesus' full endorsement when you speak the word, like you're my refuge and fortress, Father. And the angels are going to work to help that come to pass. Or what does that say in uh, 2 Timothy 4? The Lord will deliver me from every evil work. 417, 418, I think it is, 2 Timothy 418. Not turning over there. Let's go to the next verse now, verse 9. But he who disowns and denies and rejects and refuses to acknowledge me, the word. I've already told you how I got to that conclusion, John 1 1. In the beginning was the word, the word was with God, and the word was God. So he refuses to acknowledge the word before men. Doesn't mean you have to tell everybody what you think, but you need to talk about it sometimes. It says, 
Before men, he will be disowned, denied, rejected, and refused acknowledgement in the presence of the angels of God. I think that's a lot of believers right now. Amen. See, they're not confessing the word. Now, I'm not telling you to be a parrot. Nothing works for God like you just going to, I'm, I'm going to do that. I'm going to be tough, make myself do it. It ain't going to be worth anything in that attitude. You got to have a relationship. You got to be in the secret place of the most high. Not church. Church helps you get there, but yeah. church alone will never put you over in life. Okay. I love the local church. I serve the local church. That's all I deal with is people in churches. Yes, sir. And occasionally I minister to Frank. You know they had a pet pig. You remember that story? <laughs> yeah, true story. You had that pig in that saddle bag. <laughs> He's only about that long, that big around. I'm talking to you here. Hallelujah. Okay, here we go. Okay, I already did that. So we can see it's very dangerous for us to speak contrary to the written word. Now, you know, so I'm not, listen to me again here. I'm going to try to tell you something. You need to speak it or a principle of the word that can be proven in the Bible. That's what I mean. You don't have to just speak it verbatim. You can if you want, but find verses that feed you about what I'm talking about. Find verses that make you be delivered from stuff. Second Timothy 4.18 is one of those powerful scriptures in all the Bible I've ever found. He's going to deliver me from every evil work. That includes sickness, disease, paralysis, mental problems, emotional instabilities, and all, on and on I could go. So I don't want to get in this group that's not got no... God won't even acknowledge me because I'm not acknowledging his word before people. Okay, let me see. I was talking to you tonight about the, um, the visions. Uh, more and I, <laughs> Pastor Dennis picked it up last night. I said, "Well, I'll tell that tomorrow night." And I went ahead and told the whole, whole story. Thanks. <laughs> and they told me in the back room that I I said that I was a wait, wait a minute. Let me see if I can remember. Uh, was it a little priest? <laughs> so I said I didn't say that. So I asked Christina. She's back there serving. Christina, did you hear me call myself a little priest? I sure did. <laughs> what I meant to say, I've come a fur piece. <laughs> fur piece, not a <laughs> little priest. But really, I am in the priesthood, the royal priesthood. Jesus is the high priest of us. I thought, man, I don't remember saying that. Did I really say that? And she said, you sure did. <laughs> Oh, they were really hee-hawing back there. And I think they said Katie got laughing at me. <laughs> anyway. All right, let me see where I was here. I talked about the four. I believe we have, and then now, I'm just reminding you of a little side thought. When you came to the altar last night and we prayed together, you should be saying the angels out there fixing or turning and helping me get this straight. That I, The primary thing on my mind, that's what I was, or in your heart, you know, whatever. Not a list of things. Some people ask me to pray, and they make a document out of it. <laughs> That's too heady for me. Yes, you just need to know what you're believing for. The main thing is the main thing is the main thing. And then you can start splintering out. You get so comprehensive that, you know. Anyway, it's complicated. We were... $40,000 behind in our finances. So what I did, I picked a, a Sunday six weeks prior to, it was October 31st, I'll never forget it, Halloween to the world, Hallelujah Night to us. I didn't do that for this reason, but I said, I'm picking that Sunday night, and I would like all of you that come to this church to help me financially. I don't think that's too much to ask. Yes, sir. Some of you are wondering what I'm to have. You know, 
Okay, so I just said that. I said, we need $40,000. I'm going to do so. I think I sold a car and gave the money, plus whatever little bit of money I had hidden for some special reason. Wasn't much, like 400 plus the sale of my car. And I put that all in there. But anyway, I'm there, and I told the people, now, we're just going to come and worship God. We're not going to, I'm not going to do teaching, and we're only going to sing for 45 minutes, and that's it. So we're, we're here. I'm where he's at. I'm going to face you so you can see. The band is in front of me, and everybody else is behind me. You follow? I got my hands up, and I'm singing along with them, and then sometimes I close my eyes. So they're not paying attention to me. I'm just standing there. And the people behind me can't see my face, so they don't know what I'm doing. And I never dreamed this was going to happen in any shape or form. All of a sudden, I felt myself come out of my body. Remember I told you when I read that 50 years ago about Paul, other than the other than the vision I had when I was five. But, you know, I, I retained the vision of what happened and what happened to me, but that was it. So, anyway, I'm, I'm standing there worshiping God, and all of a sudden I come out of my body. I came out through my mouth, and then I just formed over here, the real me. I'm telling you something, this is the vision of 99. We needed $40,000. And so all of a sudden, now I look back, my body's still standing there, standing on my feet. I'm erect. I got both my hands up. Do you guess what I'm going to say next? What, who had hold of my arms? The angels. Because, you know, if I left my body, I would have fallen down. That's just the way the body's made. And Jesus said to me one time, yeah, Michael, I did not understand that. I said, what do you mean? He said, James. I said, well, I understand James. He said, the spirit, the the left for, for some reason and I, like I said I look back and I, I was still there, there nobody saw me I was in the spirit form I'm dark I didn't let it freak me out I listened down here and the Lord spoke to me in my spirit said step up over that threshold boom when I fat, foot came over that threshold a little fresh threshold at the bottom. That room lit up and there was a big, big game for giants. But anyway, <laughs> he looked like a bodybuilder. You know the guy that plays in all the movies, The Rock? Yes, he's bald-headed. He's from Samoa. He didn't look exactly like him. He didn't have that kind of tan, but he had some <laughs> muscles. I'm just trying to explain to you. If you want to know what this, this particular angel, he was the biggest Mama Joe dude I'd ever seen. What's a Mama Joe do? You're an angel right now. <laughs> and he talked to me, which normally they do if they come, if they have something to say. And he said to me, Michael, which they always call me Michael, because that's my name. They don't call me doctor, nothing. I'm just Michael. Michael, you're going to have to learn to become skillful. He went like this, kind of like that one angel in the big room. He used this arm and said, you're going to have to learn to become skillful with the equipment in this new room. Well, fortunately, I knew exactly what he meant. But when I looked in the new room, everything was covered up. Had it covered up. And everything in this room had a black cloth on it. It wasn't demonic. It's just it was covered. So I realized when he said that, I'm going to have to figure out what's under those claws and how that's going to help me for the next level of my ministry. I've been here for a year to me, so evidently i got to wait on him. Yes, sir. Just common sense. Yes, sir. One, one fellow came in and, and, and I said, come on over. He came and said, I said I want, somebody told me you know something about angels. I said, well, I know something. I don't know everything. How can I help you? Well, I've got these two angels that come when I'm in my 
Man, they're called to, this is what you're called to help you in your civil responsibility. That's Or by Jesus, the word, we're all, we're all beings created, it should say. You know, being is not a thing. And invisible. Have your God deals with you in your sleep, like He did Joseph. Joseph and Mary. Then when He's down in Egypt, He appeared to him again. The first time He appeared to him was when He's going to marry Mary, who's starting to get big, and he, she, she said, "I never had relations with the man." You got to be a pretty big man to swallow that. Yeah. Yeah. You ever thought about that? I think you need to think about it. It's a faith. I mean, she's swelling up. And she, oh, she's pregnant. I have never been with a man. And the angel came and said, it's okay with Mary. What's in her is of the Holy Ghost. You go ahead and marry her. What a step of faith. <laughs> okay. That was the first time. And then the other two times he appeared to him up where they lived and went to Egypt. Then he appeared to him down there, bringing back the one that was in charge up there is dead. And, of course, the Herods, they were all ruthless. All those leaders called Herod there. But anyway, am I making sense? He said he did. Told him where to go and da da da, when to come back. Or you could have a vision where you see stuff in the other world. Now, don't get squirrely with me. Did you ever get that paper? Oh, they already have it online, Pastor Dennis, at the church here. They just get online. You can download it. I have a piece of paper. doesn't say we're led by dreams. We're led by the Holy Ghost. And I commanded it to come out of the loose entity inside of them. I didn't see anything I shouldn't see, but I saw this creature. I told you about that young lady the other day, I think, in this meeting. It was in Houston, uh, Houston, Austin, and what she'd been through, and I saw this thing in her. And I not only saw it, I discerned it had to do with morality. But what I didn't know, and I didn't want to ask her publicly because she's up in front of everybody, uh, whether it was self-imposed and imposed on her or what happened to her. But she later told the pastor, my father did certain things. And 
That's the, most, that's the most hideous crime I can think of. For a young lady to not be able to trust her own father. People do stuff. You know, it's just wild. It's like the Wild West out there anymore. Anyway, so you could have a dream, a vision, or discerning of spirits. But you'd have to have one of those three or you're not going to see anything. Right. Let me say something to you like I told my granddaughter. I said, honey, I cannot give you permission to see into the spirit world. I don't have authority to do that. You're going to have to ask Jesus. You know, he's the one we're serving, and you'll, mommy will help you, and coming to church helps you. She comes to my church, or Jordan's church, my son. And you can talk to Jesus as you get a little older and ask him if he wants to do that in your life. And he wants to, that'd be great. But if he doesn't, that'd be great too. And I said to her, you don't have to see anything, which I've told adults all over the world, you don't have to see anything to use angels. You just have to do what's necessary to get them released. Yeah. Like the Nordstrom's card. you got to call for them. And if you just get up every day and say things, that would work. But let me go on with this. Kill that bug. <laughs> okay. It says, by him we're all beings created. I'm still in Colossians that are in heaven and that are in earth, visible and invisible. So, again, it's telling us there are some invisible things in the earth that unless you have a dream, a vision, or discerning of spirits, which is the gift of the spirit, the last one, uh, you're not going to see it. That doesn't mean you can't use angels. That doesn't slow you down from using them whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers, all things were created by him and for him. Now, I think you thought maybe I forgot about Pastor Silva. It told me right here, it's not, these are not things that's telling us we're warring against. You're confused with Ephesians 6. Right. Yeah. This says there's principalities. A principality is a prince. It's an angelic being over a municipality. Right. You ever watch commercials for... Las Vegas, which you do out here, stays here, or something goofy like that. That just lends you to think, I can go out there and do anything I want, and nobody know about it. Well, God would know. That's right. Amen. The devil will certainly pay attention to you if you do, you're in his camp. <laughs> At least with your body, and that's the main thing. You know, anyway. So I said to Pastor. Pastor Silva, I said, a principality, and this doesn't say it's evil right here, it just says he's got these beings, and they will, they will lend themselves to the position of government. We just had an election, didn't we? Like yesterday or something? And if you're a good a governor, or you're a good state representative, or you're a mayor of a local city, and you're a godly person, then the angels will help you do that more proficiently. If you love the devil, and like what he does, then the demonic crowd will join you. And make that turn that city into an ugly, evil place. Yes, sir. Now, there's always going to be Christians that get committed and consecrated and sanctified and stay true to God, but that would be a minority in a wicked city like that. Right. I know Dr. Summerall told us a couple in his church, they were young, young couple, married. I don't know if they had any children. And they came and told him, We're moving to San Diego. And he said, I wouldn't do that. It's a major porn capital. And you might think you could handle that right now under my protection here, but oh, yeah. and it destroyed their marriage. Yes, sir. Do I have to tell you more? I think you got it. Yeah. Certain cities are noted for, for murder. Or, now, you're protected. You don't have to give in to anything. I'm not afraid of the San Diego airport. Yeah. <laughs> I've preached in San Diego several times in my life. I had miracles there. Pastor Nancy got healed there in my meeting one time. I don't know if she told you about it, but she did. She had a problem. And when she got out of the car, I never knew she was even coming. I saw a car pull in. The pastor just pulled in with me. Mike Rabel was with me, apostle. And then the pastors, Pastor Noel and uh, Ruby. Do you know them? Yeah. And all of a sudden, this car pulled in. And I said, that looks like uh, Morgan Dufresne driving that car. And then I looked over to the passenger, and it was Pastor Nancy. She got out of the car and walked around. I got out of the car and... I looked at her. Now, Pastor Nancy, she just knows how to look very dignified and attractive in the way she does everything. I'm, I'm giving her a comment. But when I looked at her that night, she looked the same, but I said, what is wrong in here? What is wrong with her? Something's wrong with her. I could just feel it. And she got out of the car, and she hugged me, and I hugged her back appropriately. I have to almost cover my base with people anymore when I say somebody's pretty. That doesn't mean I'm lusting after them. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I don't know about the way some of you think. When I, like I tell you, I didn't see anything nasty. That angel fixed that lady. 
And I didn't see anything I shouldn't see. But I just saw his arm go in and he was doing something. So anyway, what was I saying? Oh, yeah, and she, she was going to come to your church at that time, and she fell over in her bedroom. She told me that later. It's in my, I got it at the hotel, I think, her documents. And she came in. I, just, I, I didn't say, hey, what's wrong with you? What's up? I, well, and she said, well, you could feel not well down as easy as you could at home, couldn't you? I'll drive you. And she, she came and. And voila, I'm standing there like this, and I'm fully engaged back in this physical body. You're you know, from water and stuff, whatever it is called. So I just filled myself back up. prayer and that's why we didn't have a messed up intercessory group because I taught them and then as I was there several years I put Dale in charge periodically if I had to be gone or Donna she's my secretary and where's Dale is he here tonight okay. but anyway I asked my church I had 310 members in my church at the time I like to tell this story because it's just realer than it's not you know, it's just real <laughs> I said, why don't you come pray with me, church, one night a week, give me two hours of your time. If you can't give me but an hour, don't come. I don't want you with me. I wasn't rude. I just said, I need two hours. I need an hour to teach you about intercessory prayer from my perspective, from the Word, and secondly, we'll take an hour and pray. I had seven people. Seven people. I want to say it again, seven people that came every week for seven years and when I had a picnic in my church, I had 310 people. I had 400 people there. They brought all their aunts or uncles, all the kids in the neighborhood, all the friends. Of, I didn't, they want to eat my hamburgers and eat chips, but they won't come pray with me. You, you th how do you think about that? I think that stinks. And if they were in my church back then, that's for you. You want to eat out and you want me to provide it, but you won't even come pray with me. I don't know how you count things. I just count things the way they are. I'm not trying to play with you or pimp you. I'm telling you that's the way it was. Yes, sir. For seven years, seven people, we, prayed, we got together for two hours every Monday. I think we moved at one time to Thursday or something. But when I started church, I had five prayer meetings. But anyway, this was later in, in my life. And so I want to say this so you understand what I knew what the angel said. I taught on gates and doors and rooms to the intercessors because they're the ones praying with me. The church didn't need to know about it. They weren't even interested in coming. So why teach them something they're not going to use anyway? I'm a, I'm a smart guy. I, I know you think I'm bitter about it. I'm not. But if you're a part of my church back then, of the 310 that ate all my food and came to services and wanted blessed in prayer lines, wanted to get the devil off of you, and I ask you as my pastor kindly to come pray with me one night a week, and most of them all but seven people. So 307, 303 people wouldn't come. You mad about, I'm not mad about anything, but you're going to act like that. And one lady had the gall and said, I can't figure out what you teach about every hour for 16 years. I said, you don't know nothing about prayer. We don't need you. <laughs> if that's your attitude, lady. Yes, <laughs> I'm 
the real deal. I'm not mad at anybody, but just that stunk. All right. So, I want, I, so I taught the intercessors that, and now we're on Monday night. After that Sunday night vision, now I'm back on Monday night for the intercessory prayer, and I start. I was leading the prayer, and of course I would have other people pray different parts of it. Donna, why don't you take this and pray, lead us, and we all followed her. Yes, if you're in a group prayer, you don't go run out somewhere in the parking lot when the pastor's praying in here. You're not with us. Right. Right. <laughs> I mean, that's a pretty simple thing, but people just act funny. Okay, I'm going get to off, get off this in a minute. Okay, so... Anyway, let, let's, go, let's go back here, talking about gates and doors and rooms. Go back to uh, first, let me find my reference, First Kings 19. And we'll just look at a couple verses about rooms and stuff like that. And, and not a major teaching, but I wanted you to understand what happened that Monday night at prayer. And when I came back Monday, this day after that vision, and I was just talking to him a minute, I, I started looking around. There was angels filling the room, the sanctuary. We were praying in the sanctuary. And again, I don't know, I think I had maybe, I'm going to guess and say 20 to 25 people in that prayer meeting by then. It was later on in that 16 years. First seven years, just seven. Then it drew to about 12. Then eventually it grew to 15. You know, people have a lot of funny things they say. One lady came to me and said, I don't sound like you and Donna and Dale. I said, you're not Donna and Dale and me. Yeah. <laughs> Do you have any disagreement with what I asked you to pray with me about? No. Well, then there's no problem. But if you want to leave, go ahead and leave. If you feel like that's a big deal, but I don't, if you're in agreement with us, right. then that's all you can do. You're not Dale. You're not Donna, and you're certainly not me. I'm not making fun of you, but you asked that. I don't sound like you three. I said, well, you're not supposed to be that. Are you supposed to be the pastor here? No. Well, yeah. either just be quiet and come pray with me and get with us, and if we go a direction, yield to that direction. Right. Oh. oh. I'm starting that prayer meeting, you know, and I, I didn't do much teaching that night. And all of a sudden, I got concerned for two families that are missionaries to me. You know, when I was a pastor, this is a different day for me in my life. You know what I'm saying? I still help support Michael Rabel. He's a missionary. But anyway, I had this two couples, families. They both had three children, one in Mexico and one in another uh, country I won't mention. And I, I said, let's pray for him. So I started out and prayed everything I knew in English. I bind you, Satan, in the name of Jesus. I take authority over you, and I make you leave. I release the angels of God to help them. And, you know, everything, I plead the blood of Jesus over them. And everything I would knew to say in my armament in English, I said, and nothing's moving. You know, sometimes you need to judge yourself if you're praying and you don't get stuff done, then something's amiss. And I said to the whole group, maybe there was 25 of them in there that night about that. I said, we're not hitting pay dude, are we? And I looked at Donna, I looked at Dale, and they went, nope. I said, I can feel it too. Okay, let's just pray in tongues. I started praying in tongues. And all of a sudden, and again, the sanctuary had, I didn't count them, but about 100 angels in there with us that Monday night on intercession. I'm praying for a couple in Mexico first. And then I saw this angel back here. I didn't know him, never seen him before in my life. But when he looked at me, I knew he was going to be the one to take care of that if I could get, get something over to him. So I'm praying in other tongues. In my prayer language, and I knew still it wasn't getting it done. So all of a sudden something came on me and I shifted into another gear. I shifted into some other tongue that I'd never spoken for before in my life. I just yielded to it. And the intercessors knew if I yielded to whatever they could yield or just keep praying in their tongue in the spirit. And it only took about three or four minutes. And I saw from his facial features, and he was looking at me, and I could tell he's reading what I'm saying to him in the spirit. And then it only took about three minutes, and he went, shoom, he shot through that wall. He, like a falling star comes down this way, that way, shoot, didn't make a sound, but it went, choo, like a falling star, but it went horizontal. And everybody stopped praying with me, and they didn't know what I was seeing. They were pretty attuned, I thought, because we all stopped at the same moment. So we went through the other thing with the other country, the people in that, and we started praying. Again, I'm apprehensive about this family. Something is trying to 
come against them, something dangerously trying to come against these two families. And I was apprehended down here, and I said everything again. Maybe had Donna pray that time, pray in English at first. And we all agreed, there's nothing happening. You know, you need to be able to figure out if something's happening or not. If it's not happening, you better get off that road and get in the right road here. And God will help you if you yield to him. And this was an angel over here this time. I looked at him. I knew he's going to take care of that. And I, start, I, was, I said, let's pray in tongues together. And we did. And all of a sudden, I went into another tongue, different than with that angel, but it was an unknown language to me. Are you following me? It took about three minutes. And he went, choo. He didn't make that sound, but he went through that wall to take care of that. Now, I didn't call the missionaries. I just, just left it in the Lord's hand. I felt like we accomplished it down here. The Lord said, now you got it. Oh, good, I'm glad. So the first ones called me were in Mexico. They had, I think, three armed bandits came in their home and asked Mike Rabel, where's your safe? And he laughed at him. He said, I'm a missionary. I don't have a safe. What's the matter with you guys? You're poor criminals. You're not even smart criminals. He didn't say all that. He just said, I don't have a safe. I'm, not, I'm a missionary. They put him in a room. And later he finally told me they did take something like a mixer But they all had weapons. Are you listening to me? And you know, when somebody's got a weapon on you and they're having a bad day, you might be the victim. Three of them. And they put him and his three boys in a room and his wife. Nobody got molested. Nobody got hurt. Nobody got beat up. Nobody got killed. And he said they heard a noise outside the house. Even Mike did and his family. And they just waited and listened. And they guys took off. They grabbed the mixer or something. I don't know. He just told me something minor like that. And then the other person called me from their country a week later, and he said, you know, I came home with my two older kids, and when I opened the front door, there's a guy there with a pistol pointing at me. And he yelled at his two older kids. I think the girl's the oldest. She was probably 12 or 13, I'm guessing. The son there was probably 8 or 10. And then they had his wife upstairs, two of the guys, had his wife tied up upstairs, and his baby girl. She was about 3 years old. And when he, that guy, he opened the door, and that guy had a pistol like this, he said, run, kids, and he got in an altercation right in his front doorway there, the little doorway, and the guy dropped the gun, he grabbed it, and he went out the back way. The two guys upstairs came down that had been with his wife and the baby girl. Nobody got touched, nobody got molested, nobody got raped, nobody got shot, nobody got killed. He may have had a scuffle mark from having a duke, you know, duking it out with the guy at the front door, but that's it. or something, I don't remember the exact detail, maybe I shouldn't tell that, I'm going to say that. But he kept putting something back and she died. And I got in a car accident. All right, we're, we're over at 1 Kings still, 19, verse 15, and the Lord said unto him, that's the prophet Elijah, not Elisha, but Elijah, and the Lord said unto him, go return on the way to the wilderness of Damascus, and I'm in verse uh, 15 here of 1 Kings. Kings 19. Did I say what I told you? Okay. In verse 15, I'm moving on. And said, uh, in the way of Damascus, and when you come, anoint Hazel to be king over Syria. And Jehu, uh, the son of Nimshi, shalt thou anoint to be king over Israel. And Elisha, the son of Saphat of Abel-Mahola, you shall anoint to be prophet in thy room. So this is a senior prophet. And he's anointing two different kings for two different areas. I think it's interesting. It didn't say that they told them to go to school and get an education. What they really needed was the anointing to manage a country. Yeah. Yeah, of course, I'm not putting down education. I think you should get all you can. Right. I, think, I think if you're listening to me, you know I do study my Bible. Yes, and that's my education. And I, I like to read, so I read stuff, and then I ask God about it, and I have fellowship with him, and he gives me further revelation. So, anyway... <clears throat> I wanted to show you this. He said, thou shalt anoint to be prophet in your room, prophet. So I want to say this to you just one time to help you understand it. When I go to a church to preach, I'm not special. I'm just Michael. But my ministry is the prophet. So they don't introduce me as a pastor or a teacher. They say, this is prophet, you know, or whatever. You don't have to call me that. That's not the issue. But what I'm saying is there's different anointings with different mantles, different People sometimes, evangelists, we have something similar like the prophet. They have signs and wonders too. And the apostle certainly has mighty signs and wonders. But I'm just talking to you. When he turns it over to me, though we're still in the same geographical building, you're not in his room. 
You're in my room when we do that. I'm not being dictatorial or anything. I'm trying to prove something to you. And I think pastors have rooms. Your pastors have a really nice room and a big room, and it's going to get bigger. And the apostles, the apostles have rooms. They can't pastor. They can start a church like my friend Michael Rabel. He's built about 10 churches in Mexico. I've been with him for 40 years. We've been friends. And I've been in Mexico a lot of times ministering with him and him with me in other countries. But I'm trying to show you stuff. There's a, there's a room, and then there's different rooms you can get into if you, if you have other things going to be ministered to you, like that new room. So I just think that night of intercession really ministered to me and took care of me. Let's go, let's go up here to, I'm talking about rooms still, 1 Corinthians 14. Do you mind? And if I don't get all these visions taught, it would just be okay. But I'm, this is an important one, other than the one in 208. If I, and I'm quit looking at that clock, Michael. Okay. 1 Corinthians 14, 16. Look at this. And this is in the New Covenant talking about people in a room of the unlearned. Else when the, in verse 16, 1 Corinthians 14, 16. Else when you shall bless with the Spirit... So sometimes, you know, when I pray for people, I usually do it in English, you know, and even other ministers. But then sometimes I might speak in tongues to them and then minister. Or it was more like my wife would speak in tongues and then I would interpret when she was with me. I missed that. You know, I missed that. We had that just in common. And she would give me a look. It wasn't a bad look. It was just, I got something. She didn't say that out loud. She just looked at me. I knew she had something. Yeah. One time, you know, Pastor Rogan, Dr. R Rogan, he was in my church, you know, and he was a leader of my first Bible school I had. I had three all together. He was sitting over that way, and my wife, I was up at the pulpit. She just got up and walked towards him and went, okay, here we go. <laughs> she spoke in tongues to him, and then I said, it's time for you to leave. And I couldn't believe it. I said that I wanted to pull those words back in. He was one of my best friends, still is. But it was time for him to leave. He was trained. He needed to go do his thing. Now he's got two churches in Nashville. He travels with me quite a bit sometimes. So does Pastor Dennis. And so I had to interpret it. And it told him it's time for you to go. And I felt terrible I had to say it. But I'm being honest with you. It's not about what I think. It's about what God wants him to know. You know, sometimes you can get trained until you're trained, and then you have to go. Yeah. If you have a ministry, yes, sir. now that, that'd have to come from your pastor. The head of, I was the pastor then, the head of that local church. Yes, sir. I sent out a bunch of them, and they all got crossways with me because my book on spiritual fathers. They left me over that, criticized me. Yeah, I, I've just been down a lot of places that you haven't known of, maybe, yes, or maybe you didn't know. Well, yeah, I'm a big boy. I can take it. I handled it. And one of them I talked back to, too. Well, that wasn't the way you were when you were bleeding out in a certain nation. I called, I, I called, you called me, and I prayed for you, and God stopped your bleeding, didn't he? And then you got in trouble financially, and I bailed you out to the tune of four or $5,000. And now you're sitting in my office telling me you don't like me, you don't want me anymore. So there's the door. If you don't feel like I'm current with your life, I'm not going to beg you to stay. Your heart's already gone. So just get up and leave. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I didn't like to have to sue, but they criticized me about my book. You know, if somebody criticizes you, they don't feel warm-hearted at that moment. <laughs> I'm talking. All right. So we see in 1 Corinthians, so he said, you know, you could, what I was saying was you could pray in tongues for somebody and bless them to some level. That's not all we do. But it says... How shall he that occupies the room of the unlearned say amen that you're giving thanks? Some people things happen in church, people don't have a clue why that happened. Uh -huh. Or they say, what was that? Well, you, you know, we're just moving with the Holy Ghost tonight. Right. It was the Holy Ghost told me to do this or say that. Or, or Pastor Dennis or Angie or Pastor Randy and Misty or whoever's in ministry here and Courtney and Josh. And I'm here listen. Yes, <laughs> now this is, I'm going to give you one more verse up here and then I'll move on to something else here real quick. Don't be in the room of the unlearned. If you're in that room, you won't understand what's going on. And God wants every believer that's in the local church that belongs to this church to understand why people do things. You don't have to know everything, but you should be able to flow with that. 
And the longer I was with Dr. Dufresne, I'd be in the congregation, and I would just know by the Holy Ghost, he's going to call that person out on the third row there and minister to that lady. And this is what he's going to say. And I told him about it later. He said, oh, you're just operating in the prophet's ministry like me. That's why you know those things. I wasn't his level at that point, but he was training me. I wasn't embarrassed to tell him. And, and I also, with the visions I had, I told him about them. I said, if you tell me I'm full of nonsense, I'll just forget it. I was accountable to him. Amen. Thank you so much for your warmness. Sir. And then let's look up here at verse 20, 23. It says, if therefore the whole church be come together into one place and all speak with tongues, and, then, and it doesn't say so, don't do it. Let me read on. Yeah. And there come in those that are unlearned or unbelievers, well, then not say you're mad. I, I just am shocked at this one scripture. God says if you're unlearned, you think just like an unbeliever. Yeah. That's a pathetic comment. I don't, want to, I don't want to be in that class of an unlearned person. I don't know everything about anything. I mean, I just try to learn what I can. You know what I'm saying? I'm always studying, thinking, reviewing, meditating on things, asking God, if, does this need to be changed the way I'm teaching this? If it is, I will for you. All right. So there, they, that's what's significant, I think. It didn't say if they, they come in, you're all praying with tongues, stop it. It didn't say that. Get your head in the scripture, not just what you're thinking. Well, some people don't like that. Well, that, so what? They don't like it. If the pastor says we all need to pray in tongues, if you're spirit filled, you should pray with him. If he said he wanted you to pray with him. Amen. We're not trying to please the person that doesn't know anything. We're not trying to lose them either, but we got to obey God. Right. I think this is the way the average church does that interpret. Let's bring our services down to the lowest level so we don't offend anybody. Instead of bringing it up to the highest level and really go for God. <laughs> you know. That's just my interpretation on that verse. Thank you. Okay. So anyway, I knew about gates and doors and rooms. And when I told the people praying with me on that Monday night, here's one other scripture, 1 Corinthians 13. Look at this. I knew it was in the Bible, but it didn't dawn on me when I was in Monday night intercession. 1 Corinthians 13, verse 1. Though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels and have not love, I become a sounding brass or a tinkling cymbal. In other words, it's not very effective but because you didn't have love. But it says here, you're speaking in languages of men and also of angels. So that just proves I could speak to that one over here and this one over here when I felt led to. And I just shifted. I didn't stop and try to analyze at that moment. You know, one of the most precious things Dr. Dufresne did for me got me out of my head. <laughs> I know you think I'm out of my mind, but I'm just out of my head. Okay, <laughs> okay I'm gonna, I want to try to talk to you about one more of these. I have several. What was funny is one time, I'm going to tell this little story, uh, and it'll be helpful to you. First of all, let me finish up in that new room. I finally got in that new room and began to understand. I prayed a lot about it. The healing anointing in your right hand is becoming stronger because I got in that new room. I'm still in that room since 99. So that's where I've been for quite a few years in that. Now, on the front row, he was there, Pastor Nancy. People can care less what you think they say. They might be cussing, telling dirty jokes, and all kinds of stuff. I got on a plane one time, and a guy said he was drinking a martini, and he was talking nasty to two girls in the seat behind us. And he sat down and said, what do you do? I said, I'm a preacher. What do you do? Oh, I'm, a, I'm an elder to church. <laughs> okay. I just had to let it go, or we were going to be in trouble on that flight. <laughs> Okay, 
was speaking of Texans, a guy got on a plane, had a belt buckle as big as a hubcap, <laughs> cowboy boots. He sat down beside me, and I said, what do you do for a living? I said, I'm a preacher. What do you do? I invest in things. I got a lot of money. I said, well, good. <laughs> and so the plane's getting ready to taxi, and, he, and I opened my Bible. I said, I'm, I'm going to pray over the flight. You want me to include you? He went, yeah, yeah, yeah. He had gripped on his, the arm things, gripping it real tight. I said, you big baby, take that belt off. <laughs> True story. Then I sat by another guy in first class one time, and he had a Stephen King book. And he told me his son writes horror Christian plays. I said, a horror Christian play? That's no such thing as that, is there? Well, he was just, and he was going to tell me it was. I said, you know, I just, he went to the biggest church, one of the biggest churches in the country. It's in Louisville, Kentucky. I just had to let it go with him, too. We're going to go on the floor. <laughs> no Bible, a Stephen King book. Anybody know who Stephen King represents? The weirdest of the weirdos. Dark, horror, scare something out of you. People, Okay. So anyway, so Pastor Doc, Dr. Dufresne asked the preachers to come. I came, my wife came, came up here, you know, lifted our hands up. And we came by, hit me in the head, and down I went. But then when I went down, I didn't get up. You know, this is my philosophy. I'm not up here to take a nap. Yeah. <laughs> Just to clarify something for you. And secondly, when you get up here and you do this to me, <laughs> I feel like tackling you instead of <laughs> playing hands. <laughs> what is with that? If you told me you had a broken hip, I'd put you in a chair and pray for you. What do you think I'm going to do? Hurt you hard? I've only done that to two ladies so far, so you're all right. I don't get it. Anyway, I just pay attention to people. You're, you're good teachers, good le learners from you. But anyway, I, when I fell out, I went somewhere immediately, I went, and I said to the Lord, the first thing came out of my mouth, am I in heaven? He said, no, but you're going somewhere. I, <laughs> I wanted to say, I know that, <laughs> but I did it. And he said, just pay attention. I want to show you something. This is 2008. I don't know where I went. I really don't know where I was. I was between this earthly thing and heaven itself. I wasn't in heaven yet, though. He said that. So, and there's different dimensions. Even some scientists have proven there's different levels of spiritual thing. But anyway, that's beside the point. I'm somewhere and he's going to teach me something. He said, so I'm just laying there flat like I was up here. And all of a sudden, eight angels flew in. They flew in with their wings and they came, four on this side. Now just pretend I'm laying flat, four on this side, four on that. And they didn't worship me, listen to me, and they didn't say anything to me. And I didn't say anything to them. I, don't, I mean, this is the first time I'd ever seen them. They're wearing like a chain mall type of outfit. Like you're wearing a sword fight or something, like it's a real tight weave. I don't know how to say that. And that's all they had. No, they didn't have no axes, no, no swords or, you know, or grenades. Okay, you know, whatever. <laughs> they didn't have anything to do that with. So I'm laying there and I'm thinking, okay, he said pay attention. He's going to show me something. I'm still laying there. I don't, say, I don't know anything other than those eight angels came in. And they're knelt, they're knelt down facing each other. There's four on this side, four. And all of a sudden to my left, there's this creature. I think I told this last night. It wouldn't, wouldn't hurt you to listen, though. And this creature came up with this little knoll. He had a giant head on him, and he looked like a gorilla when he got fully up where I could see him, but he had this demonic head on him. And he looked at me, and I looked at him, and boy, when he looked at me, I know he's coming for me now. He started laying them down. I don't know what I mean, his footwork. He just began to run. It seemed like he was speeded up to 100 mile an hour in my mind when I saw him. And I was trying to get out in the vision. I rebuke you in Jesus' name. And all I got out was I... And this one at my foot stood to his feet, had a bow. He didn't have it when he came. He had a quiver of arrows in his back, and he went, shoo! That thing hit that creature right in his chest, and he dissolved like he was an Etch-a-Sketch picture. You know, remember the little thing you give your kid the red, and you shake it, and it, it disappears. So I said to the Lord, Lord, could you kill a demon with an arrow? He said, he can. I said, well, what's his purpose in my life? I thought you gave me an angel when I was first born and the same one got my legs healed. He said, that's right, but this one is for now in the prophet's ministry. And then he said this to me. These are the kind of creatures coming after you now. That's why I'm giving him to you to help. And so ugly looking. And so 
mean looking. And I know it's coming for me. I don't know how I knew that. And high level things, and I understand one hit and one dead. And so, you know, 2017 came, and I felt like I had a threat on my life two times in that year. I don't know how I knew it. I know a lot of things down here my brain doesn't understand. But it always serves a meaning to things if you'll believe God to show you. If you get something like that, just say, Father, what does that mean? So at, in December of that year, 2017, I said, I appreciate you delivering me from those two incidents. He said, there were six incidents, Michael. Then I felt kind of dumb, but he said, and then he knew how I felt kind of funny about that. He said, I don't let that bug you. What if there was six or six, 600? I told you he'd take care of all that for you. And he sure did. Yeah. You sure you just didn't have something funny to eat? Yeah, I'm sure I didn't have something funny to eat. These are holy things to me. I don't know, you know, I'm just talking to you. And I thought it would help. So anyway, uh, so then, let me think here. That was it. And I also came back to the carpet where I was laying, got up, got Dr. Refrain dismissed. We went back to eat something, him and Pastor Nancy, me and Diana, my wife. And when we got, we waited till we got in the car, which I appreciate because we were sitting with other preachers. And I didn't want to have to divulge all that just to everybody. vision and then if you tell me that anybody else doing anything in that group not a single thing nobody said nothing even that one didn't say anything but they were used and then I told you about the Catholic bookstore how I saw that figurine in the cabinet and I said can you turn anywhere I can see he's back what kind of weirdo is but if you all right, let me see if I okay. Now, the eight about six weeks later, I was at home, and this is the said <laughs> see I was talking and I had you in that is we restore and repair people's bodies. I said, appreciate it. Thank you. And then they just vanished. You know, some believers I've been with, they have total unnecessary conversation. I can get anything out of it spiritual. I'm not being a prima donna. I'm just telling you what you, you sense with some people. All right. Now, praise God. Just gonna, I'm just going to tell you this one little part here. That Dr. Dufresne asked me, where was I at with him? I think I was in Mexico to preach one night. So I'm down there getting prepared, and then comes these two angels, not the same two that 
do the healing, but another two that'd be with me a lot in my life. Been in a lot of hotel rooms with me, and they say, hey, we're here tonight. I said, yeah, I'm going to talk about you. Did you know that? He said, yeah, we knew that. I said, okay. So they stayed in my room. We, that didn't, I didn't offer them tea. <laughs> I got finished getting dressed. I wasn't fully dressed, and I got on the elevator to go upstairs, and they went with me. I didn't say anything to anybody. And just recently, this is really a wonderful thing. I, it, Dr. Dufresne was in this, um, at the top of the building, the top floor, they had a, what do you call it, like uh, a room where you'd get like nuts and coffee and a Pepsi or a sandwich. You know what he said? Who's your friends with you? I said, they came downstairs. I winked at him. They're going to come with me tonight to help me minister. And he just winked back. Who does? Who knows stuff like that? Yeah. Yeah, that's and and I didn't have a witness until recently. I was at Dr. Waite's church, Doris and Michael Waite in Indianapolis, up there in that area. He said I was sitting right next to him when he told you that. I said, Praise God, I got a witness now. Yeah. I mean, a man just sitting there drinking a cup of coffee. He says, Who's your friends, Michael? I said, Well, they came downstairs. I kind of winked, and they're going to stay with me tonight. I'm teaching about them. He's good. good. Some people can just do that, can't they? You guys could move this for me if you would, and uh, you all could stand up with me, please, in the congregation. I think, uh, uh, first of all, I'd like to, I want to include Pastor you and Misty in this, but, and Pastor Dennis and Angie, but I wanted to have, what were we talking about that, about the paid staff, that works with, under Dr. Dennis and Angie to come up here with them. And I'd like to minister to you because I think you're going to go to a different level of things real soon. That's what I'm feeling in my spirit. You know, I don't because you're staff. I'm not trying to be complicated. I'm just, and I'm not being a smart aleck with you either. But sometimes you just have to work your way through things like that. When God said, "Pray for leadership," that's what He told me. Got that, and I talked to the pastor, and he said, "Well, I have people that work for me. They're paid staff. That'd be a good thing to say." I said, "Well, I'll say that." What are you waiting on, Pastor? I'm just waiting on something. Give you something, something from Him. Did it help you do whatever you do with even? a greater power and some maybe some adjustments will take place you know to make you do things more effectively i'm not saying anybody's behind but i'm just ministering to you the prophets. hallelujah so just take this anointing let it work in you here it goes into you right now receive that katie received that in the name of jesus they're coming up tonight to another level the name of Jesus. Receive that anointing on, on you to come to you, to go with the church to the next level that they're going and do your part. Take that and let that go in you and work on you. And like I told the kids, you all begin to pray in tongues a little bit extra. Just, you know, when you're quiet, I know some people have families and husbands or wives and you got children, there's stuff to do, but you just have to make a little extra time to pray and that'll help you. That'll go a long way. In the name of Jesus, receive that. Let it go in you. It's going to be powerful on you too. In the name of Jesus, receive that. Let that anointing go in her, Father. They're coming. We're coming up to the next level. They're coming up to the next level now in Jesus' name by the power of the living God. And all of these people are special to you and special to the pastor. So I thank you. They're in unity and they're in one accord. And thank you for it, Pastor Dennis, coming into a new room. And there's going to be an explosion of growth here. It seems like it always is, but there's just coming something really dynamic to you. Hallelujah. And God's going to show you the next couple of steps that you'll need to take after you build this other building that you're building for the kids, right? Yeah. Hallelujah. And your finances are coming up too. In Jesus' name. The power of God's going into you, Angie, to use, be used of God in a, a more significant way. When you get up to preach or get up to lay hands on people, things are changing for you. There's more power coming on you. Pastor Randy, receive that to come into a new place in God that you haven't known heretofore. And God's going to use you mightily. Your church is going to start growing. Hallelujah, Father. We thank you for it. 
Misty, receive that. Let that go in you and minister to you. As a, as a preacher and, and as a minister with Pastor Randy, we thank you for her. Father, I pray for Courtney, that no one go in her and minister to her and help her. Of course, pray for her. It's coming. Take that, Rebecca. what that means to you it must mean something and God's working in your behalf and you've been a real uh, blessing your faithfulness and your heart for God and your heart for the Hattabals in the name of Jesus hallelujah well praise God thank you father I'm just thrilled about it how about you <laughs> now who is here that got a problem with your shoulder I don't know if it's both shoulders or one shoulder I'd like you to come you have a problem with that Come up here quickly and I'm going to minister to you. And the same anointing that will take care of this will take care of other things. I'm talking about your shoulders right now. Hallelujah. Praise God. I'm going to pray for you and lay hands on you and get you healed. Do my best. Hallelujah. All right. Both shoulders. Father, I pray for both these shoulders to be healed by the power of the living God right now. Oh, man. Something's going into you, lady. Mm hmm and I pray for the glory to burn out any kind of calcium deposits it's both your shoulders right now in the name of Jesus heal her father hallelujah for her shoulders to be healed father in the name of Jesus let it be so let the fire of God go in there and loosen up anything that's been stiff to her and heal her I pray in the name of Jesus be healed in your shoulders Josh I command those shoulders to receive the anointing that breaks the yoke set off of you in the name of Jesus. There it is. Pray for your shoulders to be healed in the name of Jesus by the power of the living God. I pray for your shoulders to be healed in the name of the living God. Pray for your shoulders to be healed in the name of the living God. Pray for your shoulders to be healed. Can you lift your hands to the Lord for, for me just a second? It just makes things receive better. Father, we thank you for this lady coming. We thank you for what you're doing to cause those shoulders to work right and no pain in the name of Jesus. Command these shoulders to be healed by the power of God in Jesus' name. Command your shoulders, honey, to be healed in the name of Jesus. Command your shoulders to be healed in the name of Jesus by the power of God in Jesus' name. Command your shoulders, Ronnie, to be healed. The anointing goes into your shoulder and makes them more fluid-like, more easy to move and not a problem. And no pain with it. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. There's some people here, I don't know if they're male or female, but you have migraine headaches and they're pretty, pretty significant when you have them. It just seems to knock you out for a few days. You know what I mean? Where you're not yourself and pain in your head is intense who is that I'd like you to come forward and let me minister to you all right hallelujah just going by the Holy Ghost there's there's a couple ladies in here you have physical problems you know as a woman and if you'll come I'll minister to you and God will fix you and change some things for you Father, I thank you. I command those headaches to be gone. I command that loose her in the name of Jesus. Every bit of those headaches to leave you and not return. I pray you for your head to be pain-free. I command the headaches come out in the name of Jesus and let her go. And I command them not to return, Father, in the name of Jesus. 
Hang on just a minute. Oh, my goodness, that's a strong anointing coming on you now in the name of Jesus. You feel that? Yeah. I pray for his head to be healed. No more headaches, no more migraines in the name of Jesus. I rebuke you and command you come out. Loose him and let him go free. And now I command the power of God to go into him and healing. Okay. Father, I pray for this problem in her body to be resolved, changed, be fixed, be made sound, be made whole. In the name of, oh, that anointing, there it comes right there to fix that for you. In the name of Jesus, praise God. I pray for you to be changed in that area of your body. God, to heal you and make you whole, make things work right, make things work on time, make things be normal, whole and healed. Oh, there it is. That power's on you, sister. There it is. Oh, here it comes again. There it comes. Whoo, man. Okay, everybody come that needed those things that I just mentioned. All right, everybody received that. Anybody have here have any kind of heart issue with your heart, your physical pump? Something doesn't work right in there or something. I don't know exactly how to call that, but something about a heart problem. And just wait a minute and see if, who responds or somebody. You know, what are you gonna do if nobody responds? I'm gonna go on. You know, I, I mean, I don't know about you, but me, uh, I just learned to let God help lead me. And what used to happen in these earlier days, I'd be going to the car and people would be running out in the driveway. Hey, Pastor Jacob, that was me. Why didn't you come? Well, I was embarrassed. I said, well, anointing's not on me now. I'll pray for you. I'm not against you. But when the anointing's on me, that's when we get a lot better things. Come, come on up here a little closer to me. Heart issues? Yes. Okay. Father, I pray for this heart to be made whole. They're starting to do something. Something's happening to you, lady. Come in, that anointing come into that heart and make it whole, fix everything, make it work right, make it beat right. Let the valves close and open as they should in the name of Jesus. Oh my goodness, I feel that anointing. You feel that power working in you? Oh, man. Thank you, Father, for that. I call you whole and healed and well. In your part, I don't know if you were in other meetings with me. I, I don't know. I'm just saying, when you, when after I take my hands off you and you get ready to go home tonight, just begin to say the power of God's working on my heart until it makes it every bit whole. And if you need to go to the doctor, that's fine too. I'm not telling you to forget medical stuff, but I am telling you that anointing will work on your heart because I have that in my mantle for hearts. Fluttering in your heart? Okay. Father, I command that fluttering to stop command everything to be normal in her heart make it whole fix every part or put a new heart in her if you want but we thank you father you're the healer and we trust you to heal her psalm 91 says you know i will say i trust in the lord with all my heart so just trust him and he's fixing you right now right now the power of god's on you man in the name of jesus that's it right there take all you want praise god i know you felt that Watch her so you don't fall. Hallelujah. Somebody here has got something. I don't know what it is, but it's in your throat. I don't know if it's a growth or something. I don't know. It makes you feel funny when you swallow a lot of times. That's who I'm talking to right now. Who would that be? All right, come on up, young man. Come on up, young lady. Hallelujah, just something in there. You, maybe you know what it is, maybe you don't, but is that, does it, what I said, does that feel right? When you swallow, it feels odd? Yeah, how long you had it? A week or two, okay. Father, I pray, and lay hands on, lift your hands up to God for a minute. Father, I pray for this throat to be corrected. If there's anything, a knot or growth or anything that's been a hindrance, I command it to dissolve and be gone in the name of Jesus and him to be healed. Now, anointing's on you. I'm sorry? It's from husband. Husband. Oh, for your husband. You, you, you live with him, right? Uh, well, I'm asking that. Thank you. You read my mind, weren't you? For a prayer cloth, you know. One time I asked people to come if they wanted to have babies. I said, I have one requirement that you're married to somebody. <laughs> that would be prefer preferable. I wasn't trying to embarrass you. I'm just talking. What's your husband's name? Alfonso. Father, we go ahead and lay hands on my Father, we pray for Alfonso now that when this cloth is laid on him, it'll heal his body and drive out any spirits that have come to harass or torment or injure him in any way in the name of Jesus. And all the symptoms will go from him too in the name of Jesus. Here you 
go. You're welcome. Quite a few months. Okay. Does it feel irritated back there all the time because of that? Okay. Father, I pray for this young lady's throat to be healed by the power of the living God. In the name of Jesus, let it be so, Father. I command those sinuses to be healed, drainage to stop, her to feel normal and be better and be healed and sound in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. It's okay, honey. I got you. You're going to be all right in a minute. Thank you, Father. Do you need some water? Are you okay? Huh? You okay? Okay. I just say the power of God's working in me. Okay. This were for a throat thing. Mm -hmm. Father, I command that thing in her throat. I command it to dissolve and be no more. Whatever the problems be, it's shrinking. It's going. It's leaving, whatever the, the problem has been back there when she swallows, I command it to be removed. Speak healing to her in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. What a, who's this? For my daughter. For your daughter. Okay, what's her name? Tatiana. Huh? Tatiana. Oh, I can't say that. <laughs> Tatiana? Tatiana, yes. Sir. I don't know if I said that right in the first you syllable. It, you said it well. Okay, Tatiana. thank you. Yes. Lay hands on this with me. Father, we pray for this daughter to be healed. In the name of Jesus, when this cloth is laid on her, the power will go out of this cloth into her body and make her whole. In the name of Jesus, we thank you. There you go. All right, these people in line are still with about the throat stuff. Is that correct? Father, I pray for this young man's throat to be healed of any problem, anything that's been there in the, as an obstacle. And I thank you for healing him right now in the name of Jesus. Amen. Pray for my brother to be healed. And he stroke, whatever, take that out and make it dissolve, make things work back there and make it be no more of a problem to him in the name of Jesus. We just pray you to be dissipated and leave him in Jesus' name. I pray for this young lady to be healed in her throat, Father, by the power of the living God. Let the power rest on her in there and let things be made whole and right and work right in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, honey. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Let's thank him a minute. Father, we thank you for your healing power tonight. Thank you for your anointing tonight. In the name of Jesus, we thank you for it. You're our healer. Let's say this together. Father, we thank you that Jesus is our healer. He took our sicknesses. He took our diseases. He took our mental issues. He took our emotional issues. He bore it all for us so that we could be free. We could be healed. We can be whole in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Yes. I think I have one more thing here and then I'll quit if the Lord is okay with you. Uh, if you have a problem with your teeth, uh, we have a lot of miracles and healings of teeth and gums and stuff like that. So if that's the case, would you come up here? I'm going to pray for you. Either your teeth or your gums or something's not right. And I'll just lay hands on it and anointing will go into you and make that normal. Make that healed, yeah. I was with Dr. Dufresne. He gave me that word in Lima, Peru, that I would start seeing more of that. And there's refreshing in my hands. He said, you can always have that too. But I'm praying for you about your teeth, gums. Father... I, I pray for this to cure, be healed right now. I command, release the anointing on my sister to go into her mouth and heal everything that needs healed and made normal and let her be sound in that area. In the name of Jesus. Anointing's on you, lady. There it comes again. Oh, my goodness. Praise God. We'll go ahead and receive it. Father, I thank you for my sister. I pray for her teeth and gums to be healed. And the uh, TMJ thing, if that's there, it could be healed too. In Jesus' mighty name, thank you for it. Oh, my goodness. Well, God, gotcha. pray for this to be healed in your mouth in the name of Jesus. Command that to be healed. And Dennis and I were having lunch. They mentioned to me about you, Tina, about your eye. I command this eye to be healed. I curse any virus or anything like that that's tried to make it that way. In the name, oh, my goodness, there's the anointing on you. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Cause her to be able to see out of that eye, Father. Cause it to be healed and made sound. And, oh, my goodness. In Jesus' name, 
Thank you for healing her teeth and gums and all of that too in Jesus' name. Praise God. Pray for your mouth to be healed in the name of Jesus right now by the power of the living God. Command your teeth and your mouth to be healed in the name of Jesus. Command your teeth and mouth to be healed in the name of Jesus. I command your teeth and gums to be healed and your mouth to be healed in the name of Jesus. Okay. This husband and daughter okay lay hands on it with me there father i thank you for this husband and her daughter and i pray for them to be healed when this is laid on them the power will come out of these claws and go into their bodies and drive out sickness and disease and any kind of uh, demonic stuff that's tried to be bring part of it it'll have to leave them too in the name of jesus praise god jaw jaw oh, okay Command for these teeth to be solid and normal and right and the jaw, things she said. Command that to quit doing whatever it's been doing and work normal and work soundly. I pray for that to come to pass now in Jesus' name. Now, remember what I told you. Everybody needs to say when you get done with here, uh, you know, the power of God's working in me. And every time you say it, it activates that power. You know, unless you do something terrible. I mean, one time I prayed for a group of young people in my church and they all went to the movies. And when I got up the next time, I scolded them for that. Scolded them. Did I say that right? I got on them. You don't take, you know, when you get a strong anointing, then you run off to the movie picture show. I mean, even if you didn't watch something that was totally out of place, you're watching goofiness. And if I get prayed for in a meeting, I would want to go home and get alone with God and talk to him about, thank you, Father, for healing my body. Thank you, Father, for healing my body. And just spend a little time worshiping him. I didn't heal you. He healed you through me, maybe, but I'm not the healer. He is. Can you pray for my hair? I've been losing hair. You're losing hair up there. Yep. Father, I command this hair to not come out. I command it to begin to be right, and the hair will grow where it has come out, and command that to be good for her. In Jesus' name. Anointing's on you. Father, I pray for this man's mouth to be healed. In Jesus' mighty name right now. And we thank you for it. There's anointing coming on you. Pray for your mouth to be healed in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Thank you, young man, for coming. Pray your mouth to be healed, honey, in the name of Jesus. All right. Praise God. Do you think we could have the team come up? Maybe Joe's been helping me, but yeah, what, maybe uh, where is Josh? Can you sing that song I really like, the one about glory and power and honor, I think is the one I'm thinking of? If you would do that, and we'll just focus on the Lord for the last few minutes while I get done with this prayer line. Oh, you got things for me. Okay. This is for Bruce, who has macular degeneration eye, eye disease. From okay. Mm -hmm. This is for his wife, and his life has been very frail. She's had her injections recovered, but she fell recently. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Father, we just thank you for the anointing of God in my right hand. Let it go into this cloth. When it's laid on these people, the disease will have to leave, sickness will leave, pain will leave, infirmities will leave, and any kind of demonic powers will be broken off of them too. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Pray for your mouth to be healed in the name of Jesus. Pray for your mouth to be healed now in the name of Jesus. There's that anointing going in you. Pray for your mouth to be healed in the name of Jesus. Pray for your mouth to be healed in the name of Jesus right now. Everything to leave you that shouldn't be there. Everything to be made normal. Pray for your mouth to be healed, honey, in the name of Jesus. By the power of the anointing of God. Oh my goodness, that's it. It's coming on you again. Just receive it. Pray for your mouth to be healed in the name of Jesus. Thank you for it, Father. I pray for this mouth to be healed in Jesus' name by the power of the anointing of God. We thank you for it. Hallelujah. Jesus' name. Pray for your mouth to be healed, sir. In Jesus' name. Power goes in there to make it everything right. Jesus. Pray for your mouth to be healed, young man, in the name of Jesus. That's it. Pray for your mouth to be healed in the name of Jesus. Pray for your mouth to be healed in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Keep singing a minute. Hallelujah. Give you all the glory. Yes. And all of the glory. Glory, all of the praise, and 
thing I think I need to pray for people about and I want you to come seriously about this but if you think you have an attack on your mind some level of it and you're the only one that know that probably and you want to be ministered to I'll pray for you to be delivered from that now this is a this I'm going to say this to everybody too and if the kids come your parents need to make sure they do this you've got to renew your mind I can't do it all for you I'm not gonna go home and live with you I love you but you know what I'm saying I'm being practical here and we have ministered to people around the world. I gave an altar call in Siberia, Russia, and I said, I don't, you're, not, you're not an ex-addict, you're an addict today. I want you to come up here, I'm going to, make, I'm going to cast that thing out. And 37 people came and got delivered from drug addiction. So I will pray one simple prayer. I'll command that to leave you, and your part is to say in your, in, inside yourself, I believe I receive it. And then just like the others, I've said, when you leave this place, you need to start talking to the Father. Father, I love you. I thank you for making my mind normal. And I'm going to love you more. I'm going to read your word more. I'm going to fellowship with you better. See, all of that will keep that stuff away from you. And I can't do that for you. If I could, I'd do it. But I, Jesus couldn't do it for people. What I mean, he can't do your part. That's what I mean. You follow me? All right. I'm just going to pray in just a second. I'll start down here at this end, gentlemen. Thank you, Josh. Go ahead and sing that again if you don't mind. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus, come out. I rebuke that in your life in Jesus' name right now. In Jesus' name, come out. I command that to leave you. Christopher. Who's this for? Christopher. Okay. You don't, you don't need to be up here just for this. Is that right? Okay. Father, I pray for Christopher that this will knock everything off of him that's detrimental to him all the sickness. Any kind of evil power in Jesus' name. Command this come out of you in Jesus' name. Make, make his mind normal now in Jesus' name. And you'll renew your mind. In the name of Jesus, come out of him. By the power of the living God, I command it to be so. Command the power of God. Come out of her in the name of Jesus now. Anything that's been harassing her, tormenting her. In Jesus' name. You got it. Jesus' name, come out of him. Jesus' name, come out of her. Jesus' name, come out of her. In the name of Jesus, I rebuke you. Satan, I take dominion over you and I command you to loose her. In Jesus' name, there it goes. In the name of Jesus, come out of him. In the name of Jesus, by the power of the living God, I command to be so. Jesus' name, come out of him. By the power of the living God. Thank you for freedom. Thank you for the freedom that comes to this young man. Thank you for the freedom that comes to this Come out of her. I command your power broken over her mind. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Don't happen to you, lady. There it goes. In the name of Jesus, come out of her. By the power of the living God, I command that thing broken in your life. Once and for all to loose you. In the name of Jesus. All of the praise.
And the power's broken that tried to harass you. Things have harassed you from your past a little bit. Different things you felt insecure about, but that's all leaving you now. And you're bigger on the inside than you realize you are, saith the Lord. I'm taking charge and helping you with these things right now. 
And from this moment forward, you're going to begin to expand on the inside by the anointing of God. Expand to do great things for me. Expand to say what I tell you to say. Expand to lay your hands on people when I tell you to do it. And it'll be well when you do it, and you'll help them. And they'll be ministered to in a significant way. So don't let the insecurities of the past get in the way of your future right now, saith the Lord, because you're bigger on the inside than you've been. And you're much bigger than the devil. So just treat him with all your authority when he comes around. Tell him to leave. He doesn't have any place. He doesn't have any place. He doesn't have any place. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Which hand's dominant for you? The right one? Father, I pray for the anointing to go into her hand. It's been in my hand for many years. I release it to her right now. That it began to work in her like it works in me. And whatever tweaking you need to do with that, you could do that with you and her together. But I believe the anointing's going into her that's in my right hand, which is the strongest hand I have. And I pray for that to work supernaturally in her. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Amen. Wow. Father, we bless you. Let's lift our hands to heaven. Father, we're so grateful. We're so grateful and we're so respectful of your presence and what you've done in the lives of your people. We don't take it lightly. We receive. We have received. And we thank you, Lord, for ministering to all of us, touching and changing and helping and bringing hope back into people and delivering people, healing people. You're so kind. You're such a wonderful Father. And we're so grateful tonight. We're so thankful tonight for all that you've ministered and all that you've done. And Father, help those that hands were laid on them and those that were delivered, help them to get along with you and worship you and work on that part of their life and spend time with renewing the mind and spend time in your presence and moving forward in that healing and moving forward in that deliverance and, and allowing the Zoe life, the life of God to manifest in them. In the mighty name of Jesus, and we thank you, Lord. Thank you for what you've done these last three or four days. Thank you, Lord, for what you've spoken, what you've said, what you've done. We honor you, and we're grateful in Jesus' name. You know, from God's side, John 10.10 10 is the scripture. It says, see, the thief comes to rob, kill, and destroy. He says, I come that you may have life. And that's just not living. You study that out, that's the Zoe, the God kind of life. And really what God wants to do more than anything is manifest that life in you. The Zoe kind of life. That, it, that, that you become a manifestation of that kind of life. Where there's nothing missing, nothing broken. Healed, delivered, set free, full of joy, full of peace. Walking in the power of God. That's God's best. It's what we're reaching for, amen? And so I just want to encourage you, praise the Lord, that our best days are ahead of us. They're not behind us. They're all out there in front of us. Amen? Thank you, doctor, for coming. Thank you for ministering to our church. And Do you have something? Okay. Yeah. Um, actually, I had this come on me yesterday when I was praising God. But God, I felt like God told me to tell you all, you. you aren't here by accident. And that there's some things that have laid dormant on the inside of you. But God wants to resurrect those things in you tonight. And there's going to come a divine stirring when hands are laid on you. And you're going to begin to preach like a different man. It's going to be greater than the past. And, the, and what tried to suppress you and what tried to stop you 
is no longer going to be because there comes on you a new and a fresh anointing tonight. There comes upon you an enlargement, a divine stirring, and it's stirring those things that God put in the inside of you when you were a little boy and what the devil has tried to stop, but he can't stop it because just like the prophet just told me what's in you and who's in you is greater. And so here comes an impartation for that. Yeah. And it's going to be notable. Notable. It's a notable difference. Notable. It's going to be notable in your thinking, right. in your preaching, <laughs> in your church. Things are going to be different. Things Hallelujah. will not remain as they have been. You came one way, but both of you together leave different. Shoo! Thank you, Father. Oh, Father, we honor you. Yes. Father, we honor you. We honor you. And we thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name. Ha! Glory. Glory Thanks, to Lord. God. <laughs> Thanks for changing. <laughs> Glory to God. <laughs> Woo! Ah. Yep. Thanks Hallelujah. That's what kept coming to me. Notable difference. Notable, notable, notable difference. Notable right. difference. So right. So right. Hallelujah. Thank you. <laughs> thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Let's just thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank, thank you, Lord. Jesus. We honor you and bless you. Thank you, Jesus. Give you praise and give you glory. Well, if you can, Pastor Randy, I'm going to go ahead and dismiss you and Dan and okay. uh, my wife. And I want to dismiss our service. Hadn't this been awesome? Yes. Have you been blessed, church? Yes. And let me just say this. Those that are watching by live stream right now, I just pray for you right now in Jesus' name. Whatever he's called out, we just agree right now as a church for you to be healed in the name of Jesus. And we release that anointing to you to minister to you right where you are and just receive it now by faith. We call you healed and well and whole in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Well, I want to remind you about Sunday. You don't want to miss Sunday. Amen. Father, we bless you. We thank you. We call your people blessed. The angels of God go with you as you leave this place. In Jesus' name, amen. Turn to two or three people. Give them a great big God bless you. And you are dismissed.